Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Cripes Cast. This is the podcast where we talk to people for and or from the Midwest. I'm your host, Charlie Barons, and we are brought to you by Jolly Good Soda. <laughs> folks, how are we doing today? We've got Major General Matthew V. Baker on. He is the commanding general for the 88th Readiness Division, headquartered at Fort Snelling, Minnesota and Fort McCoy, Wisconsin. Uh, we got to, you know, really dive into um, the Army Reserve and uh, and and sort of what what they do over there, which is uh, a lot of interesting stuff, you know, and, and and it's a lot of stuff we don't often think about. Maybe you think about when you uh, drive by Fort McCoy or you drive by Fort Snelling, uh, and then you stop thinking about it as soon as you hit the <laughs> quick trip. But uh, they do a lot of uh, great work for our country, and we uh, discuss sort of the service to this country and. Um, you, you know, their, their role and, and really dove into, um, AI technology and how that is impacting, uh, the military today. So I, I found it to be a pretty interesting conversation. Um, joining me in the intro here is Colleen Maraca, executive producer of the Cripes cast. Colleen, how we live and how we feel. Good. What are um, you giggling about? What are you laughing about? It's just always, it's just funny. She's laughing because I went off the deep end talking about AI again. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, you know what? I think we all could be going off the deep end a little bit. It's a very interesting uh, deal. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, like it or not, I think we're actually already in the deep end. We don't know it yet. We're swimming mm -hmm. in AI. Everything's AI. Nice. Soon I won't even need to sit here. You can just have a hologram me. Uh, and a hologram me. We won't even need to like. You think you're going to get a hologram? Who do you think is going to get a hologram first? You or me? You or me? Yeah. I think because the hologram won't talk back to you, you'll probably want to invest in a Colleen Maraca hologram. Wow. Wow. I know who is, I am, and is, I know that I'm a pain. No. <sighs> Colleen, I'm saying it myself. You can say whatever you want. I would never say that. <laughs> I would face. never say that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What do you think I am? Huh? <laughs> Um, anyway, um, yeah, I think he was, he was very informative about AI and all that type of stuff that they're using now. And I'm glad we didn't go too far into the deep end because I was lost a little bit there. Were you? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. All who are lost will be found by wow. the Terminator in about <laughs> 15 years. No, do you it, think, you, how do you, how long do you think you would last in like an apocalyptic time? Like, um, yeah. you know, I don't want to brag, but I did, uh, spend, um, you know, a couple of days out in the Wyoming wilderness. So as long as I have plenty of uh, granola bar snacks from <laughs> REI, <laughs> I should be fine. No, I don't know. I mean, it depends what equipment I have. You know, it depends if I have some sort of uh, bow and arrow situation. Um, what oof. are the three things that you would pack with you for an apocalypse? An apocalypse? Oh, God. You know, it, it first question is, how bad's the apocalypse? What has died? Are bovines dead? You know, are fish dead? You know, what would my potential food sources be? It's a zombie apocalypse. Oh, well, man. You know, everyone's going to be like, I need a shotgun. But yeah, right. You know, if there's a zombie apocalypse, ammo is expensive now. Like, I don't think Bill Gates could get his hands on ammo if there's a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> you know? So I think you're going to want to look for alternative zombie killing methods, okay. um, which I don't know what those are, you know, sort of a, a regenerating um, thing, you know? Like the nice thing with vampires is you just have to have a steak of some sort. You know, ribeye or filet mignon, uh, filet mignon. Everybody <laughs> knows a vampire does not like a filet mignon, even though it is the bloodier of the steak. Yeah. Wasn't that a funny steak joke? It well, uh, we're still in it. We're oh, still in, okay. we, we, we are going to take this steak joke all the way to garlic, garlic potatoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we're idiots. Yeah. Well, it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be a good one. Um, you're speaking of wilderness. You're in the Canadian wilderness right this now. Week. When this yeah. goes out, I'm going to be in Canada. Yeah, you're car camping, yep. which, um, <clears throat> you know, now that I'm a backpacker, I can say that doesn't count. OK, you've gone yeah. backpacking once. No, no, twice, no, twice. <laughs> 
You twice. Thank you. But yeah, so we're going to be, we're planning our meals right now. My friends are, since I'm flying into Minnesota, I'm not able to buy a lot of stuff. They have my camping mat. They have my sleeping bag. I'm oh just, my they God. They have my chair. You are the worst <laughs> camping person to go with. You are everybody's nightmare. You are g- giving off huge last child vibes right now <laughs> with that. Well, I'm far away and I offered to buy it. Well, like I bought stuff. Yeah, yeah. They just have it at their well, place. You're bringing meatballs. I am. And I finished. I actually have a bag here. That are I'm, you? Okay. What? You have a bag here. Yeah. That. I, anybody can use anybody in the office. Oh, that's awesome. Have. That's yeah. super nice of you. Yeah. Um, now, yes. are your friends upset that they're like taking care of you like that? Have you, um, are you going to do something to make up for it while you're in the woods? Are you going to, you know, like be the cooker? Are you going to, I told them I'm going to be entertainment. Of course. God, your friends are saints. Yes. Wow. And then I also, um, told them like, we'll use my credit card for like the expenses on the front end. So, Happy to like be the one to take that and got it. pay for stuff. Like I'm, yeah. You guys don't have an app or whatever where you put everyone's expenses. We're gonna in. do that, but I said I have, I have a credit card that I'm happy to like do that so that nobody feels like the financial pressure when we're there, and I can just let me pay for gas and we'll figure it out. Got it. Well, so I'm doing that. Um, and entertainment. I feel like you should also be on firewood duty. No, that's for the guys. Oh, oh there are guys going on this yeah. too? They can I don't know that. how I feel about that. <laughs> they better be sleeping in separate tents from all the ladies. <laughs> we split the tent. You're all under God's <laughs> God's sky. Just remember that out there. <laughs> well, so one of them is my friend's husband. I don't really care. So like that, that makes it even weirder. That's a marital okay? tent. Makes it even weirder. The marital tent? <laughs> Good God. No, we're all in one tent. It's going to be so fun. And it's You guys fine. are all in one tent? Yeah, it's a really big tent. That sounds like... um, <laughs> Sounds like a gassy situation. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> no beans are allowed in the trip. We're just yeah. going to have... We're just going to have... Uh, actually, I'm super excited. My friend's texting about... Um, we have a really good like chicken bowl that they make every year. And so I'm very excited for that. Oh. Sweet potatoes over the fire, oh, chicken, wow. rice. You guys are bougie. You yeah. guys are bougie. You're glamping. I like it. But we are like. You're roughing it. You're out there. We're out there. I'm not going to have yeah. a shower for a week. No, I mean, no. Yeah, we're going to be. You're going to do this lake for a showering. week. Whoa, so you're going to. We have environmental know, like, soap and everything. Okay. We're, I'm basically Charlie Barron's hippie. Oh, that's good. And I'm bringing a team soda shirt. So it's going to be. A oh, write-off. yeah, it'll be a write off. Yeah, <laughs> no, that'll be good. Speaking of Team Soda shirts, folks, you can get the Team Soda and Team Pop shirts on manitowalkminute.com or cripescast.com. Just click on the merch section. Also, patreon.com slash Charlie Barons for all your behind the scenes and uh, whatnot. Finally, I am on tour, ladies and gentlemen. Head to charliebarons.com, click on the tour section, and oh my gosh, you'll get all the tour dates you want. I'm coming to your town, probably, or somewhere within, you know, a hundred mile radius. Uh, this is such a great sell. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is it worth the drive? Eh, maybe. It is. He's got a new hour and he's got some great jokes. Thank you. Thank I just, you. like, can't stop laughing about. I appreciate you, Colleen. That's <laughs> really nice plug. It's very good. Lying to your teeth, but I do appreciate that. So there you go, folks. Head to cripescast.com where you can link yourself into the merch the tour, whatever it is. All right. See you soon. So where, where are you at? Milwaukee area? I'm in Milwaukee. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How about you? Today I'm in DC and uh, I'm stationed at Fort Snelling, Minnesota, but I also have an office at Fort McCoy. Oh, okay. Cool. So um, which one do you like more? I like Fort McCoy more. You did, do you? Fort McCoy is, is like a gem. In, in the Midwest. It, it really, really is. is. Have you been out there? Yeah, I have not been on uh, the base. I've been in that area. Well, we'll get you on that base one time. See yeah. Some training, see some soldiers. Because it's, it's, it's a great, it's a, it's a great environment. We'll probably talk more about that. 
Yeah, definitely. And <clears throat> give me kind of um, your background to start off with. Where where did you grow up with and, and how did you get into the armed forces? So, all right. So I grew up in I, Villa Park till I was like 10, 11, then moved to upstate New York, Villa Park, Illinois. So, okay. Yeah, so, oh. so I am a bear. I, I'm going to put it on the record. I am a Bears fan. Okay. All right. All right. And th and this interview actually ends now. So thank you very much. Uh, all right. All right. I um, understand. <laughs> that's what so, so then I moved to upstate New York. I, I went to, you know, finished junior high and uh -huh. high school there. Uh, my dad was in the military, a Vietnam guy. He was in the National Guard at the time. Yeah. And he said, you know, he said, you know what? This would be a good thing for you to sign up for the military. And so I signed up when I was 17. Why did he say that? Did he think you'd be interested in it? Good with sort of a, a more structured uh, life, 17 plus? It, what, what I, was think, the I think it, I think it was for education. I think it was for structure. Yeah. And I think, you know, he, he really enjoyed being in the military and yeah. uh, had a lot of good experiences in the military. Nice. Uh, so then I joined. Uh, I went to basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia, the lowest private in the world. and. Uh, and then I ended up going to school at University of Illinois at Chicago. And at that time, the government said, hey, you're a pretty smart guy. We're going to send you to this OCS, Officer Candidate School. And I said, I go, what's that? I go, I just want to be a soldier. They go, no, no, you get paid more money. It's more responsibility. So that's how I got my commission. I never joined the military saying, you know what? I want to be a career officer and I want to do this. And this is my path. I just kind of went with the flow. And, uh, and then so I was in the... National Guard for a little while. I ended up having a career in uh, in it, it, well, at the time I went to uh, basic basic officer course. They said you want to go active duty or you want to stay in the reserve. I said I want to stay in the reserve, and I got my degree in information computer science mathematics. And uh, I did a lot of career is National Guard and Reserve preponderance Army Reserve, uh, and I've lived in Northern Illinois for ever. Uh, after I got out of school, I met my wife and got married, had kids. And then I just, you know, then I was, yeah, I've gone uh, on and off active duty tours. So I've been to Afghanistan, Iraq, done all those type of things. Uh, and and I had a good career in the, in the uh, computer science world, the software world. I was a senior director for a company. Uh, and then I was a VP for a company. And, you know, as a traditional reserve soldier you have a job on the civilian side and you have a job on the military side so my previous job it just wore me out i was a uh, 416th theater engineer commander so i had eleven thousand soldiers under me i was responsible for europe planning for engineer operations and doing this part-time so i was working at a civilian job and i had a military job working about 80 to 100 hours a week oh my and i just I, I i pulled the plug and i said i have to do one or the other so now that I was brought on active duty for this tour. So the commander of the 88th Readiness Division. So that's kind of where, where I am now. So really started out as a private, not knowing what I was going to do. And then, you know, ended up as a two-star general. So it, yeah, it, it's, that's, that's, that's quite the, uh, the pathway, you know, and I think a lot of people may be um, confused by that or may not even um, know about that, um, you know, the reserves, uh, even though, you know, there's a lot of, word gang out there. So uh, how, how could you kind of um, describe that for people? When do you, when are you able to get in and um, do you, how many hours do you give to that and to your civilian job typically? So the reserve, and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, codify both the national guard and reserve under the reserve forces. Cause it's kind of the same thing. You have your, you know, Wisconsin national guard, you have your army reserve. Uh, so at about 18, 17, 18, you can sign up. And the Army Reserve, I've had this conversation with a lot of people. There are so many opportunities with being a part-time soldier. You know, for, for the basic soldier, you're looking at, you know, one weekend a month, two weeks out of the year. But the benefits that you get out of that are just tremendous. Uh, you know, I have, for instance, I have over, the Army Reserve has over 100 Minuteman scholarships for college, full rides that are going unused this year. Wow. And, and, the, and, and, you know, as you, as you talk, and I, and I think, you know, we are having a recruiting problem and I, I think part of it's getting to the family and, and having the families understand, you know, what the army reserve is about. You're not going to go out and go kill people and, you know, be trigger pullers. 
you know, the preponderance of the military is support roles. Uh, in the Army Reserve, we have over 200 different jobs. You can be a medic, you can be a dental hygienist, you can be an engineer, you can be a truck driver, you can be cyber, you can be intelligence, you can be a military police officer. And these are all career sets that really, really lead credence to the civilian world and our skill sets that are transferable. Totally. Yeah. And, and you get the um, the scholarship to, on top of the education. You know, people do have these fears that, you know, uh, you get into the reserve and then, you know, maybe you are going to have to go overseas, be involved in a war zone or something like that. And then, you know, they would lose their son or daughter. I mean, does that seem to be like the fear that prevents people from maybe taking uh, part in the opportunity or is there something else? Like what are people's hesitations typically? Well, I think, I think that's one of them. And you know, that, that, that is a fear, right? I mean, mm -hmm. our, our best, you know, our most, treasured commodity is people and our soldiers and our family members. And, and you don't want that to happen. I, I think some other things that are just playing into it is the lack of understanding of what the military is about. And, uh, you know, the military is an organization. I, I am so proud to be part of the military, uh, but I think patriotic values have kind of gone down too. Mm. And, and the, you know, the service to a nation service to something bigger than yourself or your immediate surroundings. Are, are, is is not really you know recognized and uh, you know in the Midwest and, and it varies. I mean, I travel. I'm I'm a senior commander for 19 states right now, and and different different states have different views, uh, different political views, and different just values. Uh, I will tell you that Wisconsin is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I really I really I mean I Sparta mm -hmm. Toma those are my second hometowns. I, I I just it's just a great area, but. And, you know, so you look at, you know, why are we having problems recruiting not only the reserve, but, but the total force? And, uh, you know, I just can't put my finger on it, but it's, it's, I think just the ideas of, of serving have, have gone away. And I, I don't think that people really appreciate what they have in America, uh, the bottom line and, and what's, and, and putting out, you know, putting, putting forth some effort to, to ensure that we have the freedoms that we have. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, um, I, I think those things can definitely be taken for granted. Um, for sure. I, I wonder what it, what is it that, you know, you guys do on a day in day out basis to kind of, because, you know, there's a whole, there's whole different levels to the to the military, whether it's working overseas or maybe it's working here when there's a natural disaster. Um, there's lots of different levels of service. And um, I wonder if you could describe like maybe the the main sort of pillars of service that that you guys do. So people know exactly, you know, what they'd be doing uh, if they were to get involved. Yeah. So, you know, a typical soldier, you know, we uh, for, for reserve soldier. You know, you come in, you do your, you do your, your one weekend a month, or it might be, you know, two weekends, depending on what's going on, but you train and you, you, we have to meet all the same requirements of active duty. So we have to take the physical fitness test once a year or twice a year. We have to do weapons qual, and we really have to train on what we do as soldiers. If you're a medic, you need to train on your medical skills and get, keep your certifications up. And then you, you would do that on your, you know, one weekend a month all leading to a collective training event, which is your two to three weeks, where it could be at Fort McCoy, uh, which is the premier training center in, in the Midwest, or it could be overseas uh, training with the active component. Uh, you know, I have, I have soldiers in Australia doing an operation with First Corps with Talisman Sabre. Uh, you know, in my last unit, we, we did a lot with Europe. So you do, you do your prep work all throughout the year to train you up for that culminating exercise that you're going to do uh, and, and where you really do your job, you go out to the field or wherever you're going uh, and you are in simulated combat situations and you exercise, you know, at the, at the higher level, you're, you're doing the planning and coordinating and, and cyber, you know, computer systems. Uh, and, and if you're, you know, then you're executing these missions and we have simulated, you know, op four or enemy, and that's always playing into it. And, you know, see, so it's, 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 you're going to battle for two weeks, you know, for, for most soldiers and you wear your miles gear and you have your weapons. 
But uh, so it, it's just a you know the enterprise is so big. That's just one little facet of the portfolio or where you'd be training. Uh, so it's 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 great. Yeah, and um, th- you know what is the. Uh, would you say like once folks get in and they've signed up and they're they're going through the deal, what what are kind of the biggest, you know, hang ups, I guess, once you get there? Or is it, you know, there's not much kind of the hardest part is just signing up. Well, the hardest part, you sign up, you got to go to basic training and, you know, your, your advanced individual training. So that's 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 a that's a commitment because everyone. Every soldier goes to the same one, whether you're active duty, National Guard Reserve. I, I think the hang up becomes, you know, I'm signed up and now, you know, I got to give up that weekend a month or to, for, for officers and NCOs, it's the continuing education. We have, we have a lot of courses that to maintain or get promoted, you have to go to schools. And it's, you know, it's never a good time to get these schools in. And if you don't get the schools in, then you're not going to get promoted. I, I will tell you that we have the most educated force in the world. Uh, it's that professional development that we continually strive for, you know, to get after. And we really, really take uh, take pride in how we develop our our subordinates so that they can exercise the mission without a general being on the front line getting shot up to, to dictate where things are going and, and, and control the battle. Right, right. Yeah, and um, like when you talk about um – does that education um, kind of extend? Because uh, everybody, once you get in, you get uh, the, the, this. You get a scholarship, essentially, correct? Yeah, there, there's funding. Yeah, once you get in, there's funding. That that's that. So that's your that's your civilian education. You know, you go in your civilian education. This is this is the military education side of the house, where you know, as a uh, you know, an E four, you know, a, a specialist that's going to take on their first, if they're going to become a sergeant. They have to go to this thing called basic leader course. Mm-hmm. And that's 30 days. We send this person off and we teach them how to be a supervisor and lead people for the first time. And they're immersed in, it. they're doing uh, Myers-Briggs on personalities, how to deal with personalities, how to write the senior leaders, how to deal with confrontation, how to manage people. And those are 21 year olds that in, and I will tell you, in the corporate world, you don't get that. Yeah, right. Yeah, wow, you have them doing personality tests, huh? Yeah. Right and, off the yeah. gate. That that's yeah. that's interesting. You know, because uh, that those are really fun. You know, you do some of those, and and you learn what somebody is, and then you look at the problems you may have with that person. You're like, oh my gosh, it is textbook. You know, but it, it's cool. I mean, that 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 those dynamics um, come into play there, and um, you know, you, you kind of, I don't know. I, I just thought that was, that, that was interesting. I know a lot of companies do that, uh, but yeah, definitely not all. And it's very interesting that, you know, you guys do that. Yeah. And, and, and the military, we, I mean, we are a very educationally focused organization. Uh, I mean, we, we put a lot of money, we invest a lot of money in soldiers at all levels to, to ensure that they're, they're top notch and ready to go. Yeah. And wh- when, w- when would a situation um, occur where, you know, you would uh, be going overseas, maybe getting into some form of a combat situation? Like, what would that look like? So, you know, it, 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 it varies. It's very predictable now, but we, we are having, uh, you know, emerging requirements for what's going on in Ukraine and how do we support the force in Germany and Poland and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's really... It, the, the, the process is, is pretty in depth on how it happens, but you you know units know pretty much a year to three years out that they're going to mobilize that they're going to go overseas now, and and then there's once you, once you're identified uh, and and you get a force tracking number and you're on the patch chart. So this you know engineer company is from Wisconsin is going to go to Kuwait or go to Iraq. That's identified a year or two out, and, and it's all to meet a mission. What's the mission over there, and what unit is going to fit there? And what the Army Reserve and National Guard are doing right now is they're filling the gaps from active duty, what they can't fill. And so we train up, and uh, and you and you you know you do your year of training, and you get ready to go, and then you go to your 
your force projection platform, which will be Fort Bliss with Fort Hood right now. But Fort McCoy is one in case there's a large scale mobilization. Soldiers will come and mobilize you there. And they're there for about three weeks. And then you go overseas, you do your mission, and uh, then you come home and you know, you kiss your wife and your kids and say, hey, I'm back, and you go on with your life. It's you know, I, I put it, I simplify it, but you know, it's kind of it's kind of messed up where what we're asking this to all happen and how this cycle goes. Uh, because it's like, all right, you know, could you Charlie, could you imagine saying, hey. Honey, I'm gone. I'll see you in a year. That is a very, very tough sacrifice that uh, I think a lot of people make, you know, and I can I can understand people's hesitation to doing that. And, you know, I respect those who decide to do it, but it's tough. But and, 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 but the other side is that when you're deployed, it's a different world and people don't mind being deployed. It's, you know, you're with you're with a group of people that are in the same situation that you're at. Right. You're yeah. all there. Every day, you know, your family's, yeah, you got them, you know, you, you try you, and you do your job. You're working 12 hours, you're working long days, hard days. And, and uh, but I would say 90% of the people come back and say, soldiers come back and say, you know what? This is awesome. You know, I, I think I found the marketing uh, deal. Hey, do you want to get away from your wife and kids for nine months to a year? <laughs> Join the uh, reserves. Join the reserves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I always tell people that, you know, and, and especially in the height of the mobilizations that, you know, especially the first time deployers, you are going to come back a different person. Yeah. Whether you think you are or not, you're going to experience things, you know, good, bad, or different. <clears throat> uh, and it's how you deal with those and how you rely on your, you know, your battle buddies and how you do that. But no matter what, you, you're going to go over there and I don't care what your role is. You're going to come back a different person. And, uh, you know, and how, what kind of person do you want to come back as? And, uh, and you got to really think about that. And like, what? And Cause you're talking to 20 year olds. And like, what? what do you mean? I go, trust me. And then when I see soldiers coming back and I, I'll talk to them, I go, you're exactly right. I'm, you know, I'm more mature. I was, uh, you know, I was, I experienced a lot of different things and it could be very traumatic things. It could be very positive things. Uh, but one thing that people have when they're deployed and is a sense of purpose because everybody relies on you to do your job, whether it's fueling up the vehicles at the end of the day, whether it's covering somebody's flank, whether it's, you know, clearing an IED or whether it's moving a pack, you know, fuel from point A to point B, every single purpose person has a purpose and you you own that purpose because if you if you don't do your job the mission will fail somewhere along the way in that an interesting thing and and i've heard that um you know that said in a few different ways by a few different folks um even just on this podcast um how do you um do you think the the military puts the steps in place for people to translate that purpose once they get out um, of service? Like, do, so, you, do you know if there's a transitional thing? Because I think that's been a tough thing for some folks I've talked to is to have such a defined purpose and then and then lose it, you know? No, and, and you're exactly right. And, and if you look, and, and we don't, we have, we have, you know, mental health is a sign of weakness, in, you know, in society, which it shouldn't be, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's why we have suicides. But I think some of the suicides that we have during, you know, when, when we had the influx was you have somebody going 100 miles an hour and they had purpose in life. And this was their purpose. And they come back and it's like, what kind of purpose do I have now? You know, and, and I think we, you know, I, I saw that in some of the suicide investigations that I was a part of. Mm. And it's like, yeah, I come back and what do I do? I, I work at Walmart. I play this video game. And uh you know, is my life worth anything? So you, you hit it pretty good. It's like, how do we transition that? How do we off-ramp somebody going from 100 miles an hour to maybe 60 miles an hour and still show that they have purpose in life? And, and a lot of organizations, you know, like, uh, you know, Wound War, all those kind of organizations do play a good part of that. And sure. Show people and get people together that, uh, you know, I, I'm part of the Combat Bets Motorcycle Association. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Got and a Harley? I, I got a Harley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. But you ride? A little. 
I have a Harley as well. I just got it. All right. I'm, I'm really bad. What kind is it? It's a 98 Sportster. All right. So it's a little guy. Well, you didn't need to say it like that, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But so being part of this organization is, it's a group of guys and to be in it, you've had to serve the combat, but we all have the same, you know, I'm a, I'm a two-star general and I hate being noted, you know, recognized as a general because I, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm part of the organization and you you develop friendships and, and some people are really really messed up. Right. Mm. Some people are, you know, good. and, And it's, it's just having somebody to talk to that shared the same experiences that you have, be it divorced because of uh, a deployment, be it because financial, you know, be it because, you know what, some of the things that you did or whatever were kind of messed up and it's playing with your head. So, uh, I, so I, I found really good solace in being part of that organization. And there's a lot out there and I would encourage any soldier or that's retired that mm-hmm. may have some issues you know, find these organizations because it's not smoke and mirrors. It's real people that really care about you. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, I think that's, that's great. And, you know, over the years as sort of the, um, the realization of the mental health implications of perhaps serving in combat and coming back. Um, do you think the military, um, is taking, you know, like the, those are organizations outside of the military that, you know, people started to put together. Does the military, um, you know, are there adequate ways for people to find these things when they return home? Or is that something that maybe the um, military as a whole could kind of get better at um, ad- advocating and getting, um, you know, veterans linked up with? Now, the military is doing all they can. You know, we're part of different programs. Again, it's the, we put a lot of effort into this. And we, you know, every suicide investigation, you know, is briefed at the highest level. Yeah. And, you know, we we want to figure this out. You know, you can't, and I mean, it's like, how do you get, you know, some side of someone's head and say, hey, this is a bad idea. Don't do this. Uh, So we throw a lot of, we do a lot of research and we put a lot into trying to find better programs to take care of soldiers. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that one thing, you know, suicides in the Army Reserve are down a little bit, which is are good. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I did see for a while was suicide ideations where, and, and, and this is where I think successful training has, has come in where we train soldiers, say there's help and also training NCOs and their battle buddies to how to treat somebody that, you know, how do, how do you deal with it? Hey, I come up to you and say, Hey, Charlie, you know, I'm thinking about killing myself. I, I just, I'm done. You know, what do you do? Right. What do you do? How do you take care of me? So that, yeah. and, and we've gotten a lot better at that. You know, how we put people on orders, you know, if they're a part-time soldier, we put you on orders, we get you the healthcare we need. So we are getting a lot better at that. Yeah, it, it it is a tough thing. And um, but what you're saying is that is it part of training now to kind of yeah. um pick out these sort of maybe early signs of suicide or yes. and then yes. the, there's a protocol and all that in place? Yeah, we, we, we go we we do suicide prevention training. That's a yearly requirement. Uh-huh. And and we've gotten better at it before you should be better be a power power slide presentation. Uh, you know, now it's, yeah, we talked about the signs and really the, the, the best things I get out of it is, and I'll sit in some small groups and it's talking about situations. It's talking about friends, it's talking about family that have had issues, mental health issues and stuff like that. And I think taking it from a PowerPoint presentation to, you know, what everyone sits around and we just talk about it and, you know, not forcing people to talk about it, but talk about it and, and get it out there. And really understand that it is a problem and we need to address it. And and sometimes we'll get people coming out of those sessions like, you know what? I need some help. Yeah. And, and get that. So Yeah. No, that I mean that's that's really great that that's um the direction. Yeah, it is a tough thing. I mean, we've all had friends who have, you know, gone down that road, um, both, you know, in the military and otherwise. <laughs> All right, we are in the dog days of summer. The dog days, folks. It's the peak heat season. What better way to cool off than to sip on a jolly good soda? Mm -mm, That is just so refreshing. 
on a nice hot summer day like today, Colleen, <laughs> I prefer a cream soda. <laughs> Why are you laughing about I that? I prefer probably, I'm looking at the soaps to remind me of the flavors. I like the cherry, the fruit punch. Fruit punch. That's my vibe. Nice. Yeah, yeah. fruit punch is tasty. And of course, for those old fashions, Jolly Good Sour Power. It is heaven in a can, ladies and gentlemen, right there from Random Lake, Wisconsin. And finally, folks, give your car a nice tune-up with the help from the Fleet Farm. They've got a huge selection of cars, batteries, motor oils, wiper blades, and so, so much more. Also, spark plugs. Plus, their auto center can get you set up with a fresh set of tires to help out with some routine maintenance. Put the penny on your tires. See if it's time to turn into the fleet farm. Your car's going to be running smoother than ever after you get hooked up with the best over at the fleet farm. We love it. And finally, finally, folks, CripesCast.com. Click on the merch section. Team Soda versus Team Pop t-shirts, hoodies, tanks, tees, drinkware, old cribbage boards. Perfect for your cabin perfect way to decor if someone's got a birthday coming up geez louise yeah <laughs> click on the tour section <laughs> see me on the road i can i mean i'm loving my new hour i'm excited to share it with all of you uh please come see me on the road that it, otherwise it's gonna be me there talking to a, a wall and, and finally folks patreon.com <laughs> slash charlie barons where you get behind the scenes stuff it is probably worth the five dollars a month but not much more not anymore five dollars exactly and for now and forever it's only 4.99 so there you have it patreon.com slash charlie barons <laughs> you're on one today dude i'm on a tear let's go all right let's get back to the cripes cast <laughs> to switch topics a, a little bit um now I'm, I've been, you know, reading all about AI for a while now, you know, and and I'm curious what role AI has because um, it's changing so quickly. And, you know, the, the U.S. military is such a big thing, you know, how is how will that be integrated? Do you do you guys know yet? Are, are you still figuring it out? I Well, I think we're. Like you said, it, it's 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 changing it at an exponential rate, right? It, yeah. As AI as AI matures, it becomes more intelligent, right? And it becomes you know you can use it in different facets. Uh, one of the companies I worked for was was an AI company prior to this. And, oh no, uh, kidding! Just just how we utilize data. Uh, we are setting. I was just at the Pentagon yesterday, you know, setting meetings and. And there is an AI initiatives group and things like that of how we do it and how we harness it. You know, it can be used at, at it can be used at the tactical level, the operational, the strategic level. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's all data based. It's all getting data and putting it together to come up with something. Right. Yeah. Be it a paper, be it you know, however you want. And uh, you know, I I don't want to go into like the nitty gritty, but we, yeah, we are using AI uh, and. You know, use predictive AI, you know, with the enemy, right? If an enemy, if you, if you, if you scan the ground, right? And I'll just, this is just a simple scenario at the, at the operational. You scan the ground and you see a unit setting up different things, right? You see, ah, this, this structure changed a little bit. This structure changed a little bit. And then you, then you morph it into it and it becomes a command post. Well, when they start doing that data, when they start doing that somewhere else, and you're doing, you're pulling in data from wherever, and you're seeing that same kind of, uh, I don't know, building or say, you know, that same kind of formation building. Well, that guess what they're going to be building, there, right? Yeah. Or if you look at the number of trucks that are going in, you know, you see five fuelers going in. Well, that's going to be a fuel point. Yeah. You know, those just those type of things, but processing it faster than humans can process it because we have Intel analysts, analysts that would do that now, right? Right. Okay, well, we see this, we see this. Well, AI will do it at, you know, uh, it, it, you know the snap of a finger. I, I'm right. predicting. Uh, just on on movements of forces, uh, uh, you know, you could, you could do that. But one of the, where I was involved was training, developing training plans so that somebody didn't have to develop a training plan. You could just say, hey, I want to do a movement to contact. You hit a button, 
and it'll call, come in, it'll set up the ranges, they'll say you need this many people, and it'll do an analysis of your forces, how well they're trained, and then it'll say, hey, you're going to do pretty well on this, but you might want to focus on X, Y, Z, because we, you know, I see that weakness in your, in your swing, and that's just the computer telling you that. Right. Yeah. So, so there's, there, there's, there's, we haven't even scratched the surface on it. I don't think so. When is the Terminator coming? I don't know. What, what is it? Starnet or what's it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Starnet like that, exactly. Right? Uh, yeah. I, I, could you ever see, um, you know, they always talk about that kind of thing. Could you see, you know, that sort of a deal actually being put into place? Or do you think they're, the governments are going to put up like guardrails for that? Well, I, you know, every government has a voice, right? So yeah. what government wants to do it, what government doesn't support it. And and I think that's what we're trying to get our get our arms around. Yeah, I will tell you. You know, I I was at the, I was at AUSA Army, Army United States Association, the United States Army Association, right? Yeah. And we're doing they're doing a demo, and a caterpillar is, and there's a dozers that are creating a tank ditch in Texas, and they're doing it from Washington D.C. and nobody's. That they're not manned. They're just doing it. Really? Right? Yeah. Uh, so, so I think you will have, I mean, we have it now with drones. We have, you know, we, you know, some of the conditions on our trucks, you know, will we have convoys, you know, convoys are, you know, that's some of the deadliest missions that we have are running convoys. Will we have convoys that are just, they're just trucks going out there and driving themselves. Uh, I believe that, you know, it's, it's the, the, the real thing is, is the, uh, is the decision to pull a trigger on an adversary, right? Where, where does that line get drawn? Where is a, a machine or computer deciding to pull that trigger versus a human deciding to pull that trigger, right? So, you know, and then it starts to get into a real, real gray yeah. area of, of who's deciding this, who's deciding that. But, you know, you're going to see a lot more automation. You're going to see a lot more AI and it's going to save lives. You know, we could be, you know, we could be fighting wars like through the matrix or something, you know? It's really, yeah, it's really bizarre, you know? Yeah. You see, because even driving, you know, people say, uh, when you get behind the wheel, you're basically, uh, loading a gun to it to an extent because that right. that's the power that that car has you know right and you got ai already kind of deciding that to a degree so it's um i mean it's different than the intent is to drive the intent is not you know to um like kill an enemy or whatever um but it, it's it just uh, you know it's kind of fascinating bringing up and one of the reasons i'm bringing up with you is you know thinking about how do the jobs of today change for tomorrow, not just in the combat setting, but in really every sector. And I would think the military would be on the um, cutting edge of the AI technology as you kind of have to be, because you know China is, you know Russia is, all that sort of stuff. So maybe that is uh, an interesting place and you being in the tech sector too, I mean, that might be the place to really get the best training you can in uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, and and we are, and and again, we I, I think artificial intelligence kind of hit everybody like in the back of the head with the two by four. Yeah, like, wow, we we wow, what's this AI? What you know, a year ago we weren't really talking about it. No, but then it started writing everyone's term papers and cover letters and emails and texts to their girlfriends, and now they're like, holy smokes, what is this thing? Right, and and and, and like again, you're just scratching the surface writing letters. What about you know? you know war plans what about you know right how, what about fighting the fight what about developing new technology through ai on how we do how we conduct war i'm telling you this is and and really one of the key things in the army reserve is in cyber right so mm. cyber defense we, you know we we pull a lot of soldiers in for that and intelligence uh there's there's just so much going on on the technical side of the house they're like you know we have these things called talents, and this was a while ago. And what they do is they go out, they're robots. They go out and they find IEDs on routes. You know, so you're there, you think there's an IED. And you know how we, you know how we changed how we, how we guided them? You know, it used to be like a screen, a joystick. We did what? PS controllers. 
because all the kids coming out of high school knew how to use a PS controller. Right. Right. And, and that, that drove technology and how we, how we developed those systems. Wow. So, so it's just, uh, but, that is interesting yeah. how video games kind of drive a lot of that tech market. Where are we going sort of like from uh, what jobs are here today that most likely won't be here tomorrow? And how do you kind of get in front of that uh, to a degree? Yeah. So really, you know, so we're, you know, we, we've been planning the Army 2030, right? Now we're implementing the Army 2030 with technologies and things. And now we're going to start planning the army of 2040. Yeah. And how does technology, how do, you know, we, we are, you know, some of the senior leaders as myself, right. We, we, we always think, you know, the way we've always thought. And, and we, now we have to get out of our own way some, somehow yeah. uh, to think, you know, what, you know, and, 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 and Millie, the joint chief staff and, and the convo, they're thinking about this too. They're thinking about the convoys you know, that are automated. They're thinking about all this automation and, and some of the, you know, some of the things that we're doing that they put into place where, you know what, every, every battle system has to be, we're able to be run autonomously, right. Remotely. Right. So, you know, we're, so we are thinking about that and what, what jobs do we, you know, divest of versus invest in. And that's always, that's always a, a struggle because everyone has their sacred cows. Um, hey, no, I like this. No, this is the way it was always supposed to be. But and what you're seeing really in, you know, artillery, you know, you know long range fires, and hypersonics, I think you're going to see a big change in change in that a direction in that. And we have already had that change in direction. But really, where do we put the investment in? Mm -hmm. How do we invest? I mean, the Army is not a like a little speedboat. It's a ship. And you know, we don't change directions on a dime. We start, you know, we plan five years out. Yeah, and we fund five years out, and we start to implement those. Pro you know what we're going to do, and so and that's yeah. that's got to be so getting tougher and tougher to do, given that technology is changing. You know, I mean, months in in a month, it could be drastically different than it was a month ago. You know, yeah. So warfare as we see it today, you know, I think it's going to change exponentially over the next few years it's been slow right we, you know we still have equipment from 60 70 years ago in our formations right so it, you know how do we replace that how do we replace it at a, at a better rate with a more efficient more capable system well and some some systems i mean aren't the nukes still like controlled by a floppy disk of some sort you know or you don't want the technology to be super advanced because as soon as it gets advanced it gets hackable is that accurate but, well, I, I think that's, I, I think with a, a globalized economy, I think we're already, we're already there, right? I, I don't think you can put up the defenses of, you know, we protect everything, our intellectual property and things like that, but our adversaries are going after it. And you're, you're right. It's, it's, it's hackable, right? Anything yeah. that's a computer system is hackable. And you see those, those attacks, you know, happening, but, you know, how do you, how do you retain your proprietary information and not have it hacked? So it's a, uh, it's you know I we have these things called you know what joint light tactical vehicles JLTVs and uh, they are the coolest thing uh, they're they're AI in them right you, you know you drive in them and the suspension automatically corrects to the to the terrain uh -huh. you have you have the the visors flip down and you have night vision on the visors so you can just it's like a screen you're driving through a TV you know all the stuff that ha you know it has and it's just you know it's it's all AI, you know, in a sense, low end AI, but it, it, you know, everything that adjusts and everything that happens is that we'll get you out on one of those. If you come out to Fort McCoy, we'll get you out on one of those light fighters. Hey, that yeah. I'd be really interested to to do that. Yeah, that would that would be a lot of fun. We gotta find a time to do that. Um, before we go into that, though, I wanted to ask one last question: TikTok. Um, you guys can't have that on your phone or anything like that. Is that correct? Yeah, well, my kids laugh because you know they do TikTok and they go, "Dad, I thought military people weren't supposed to be tick do TikTok," you know. Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, but, you know, uh, they're doing it on their own phone." Yeah, we don't, we don't have it on on any government phone. You can't have it. So what's the what's the big concern there? Is that um, it's it's tracking uh, information China owns uh, the parent company is. 
Is that the basic? My, so, so my perspective is this, right? Everything is data driven. Uh, I think that there are adversaries out there that are getting, you know, getting data on everybody, right? Uh, and if you get the data on people, then you kind of know what they're going to do and they're predictive. It goes to the AI model. But if you look at the agreements, uh, when you go into TikTok, Oh, it's it ridiculous. It, it, you, you have access to everything in, in this, in, on my phone, all the data, all my contacts, you know, you, you're giving away all your information to an organization, whatever, however they use that organization. And, you know, and, and then we, I don't think it's clearly defined of, what vulnerabilities are in there. So can, you know, I mean, years ago I was in a meeting and a guy, you know, it was a military meeting, a guy brings in his 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 phone, his smartphone, he goes, you know what? You know, this is the reason we don't lie. It was hacked. He goes, you know, he he had somebody hack it for him. But look at, you know, it looks like it's off, but somebody's hearing exactly what we're saying here and what we're doing. So does that software introduce those vulnerabilities? I don't know. Uh, does it, is it collecting data on you? Yes. Uh, and uh, so, you know, that's why we don't want our government phone. I mean, you have emails, you're doing your emails, you know, from your phone. Do you really want somebody seeing my government emails and or your emails? Privacy, I think, I think people in general have really set aside their privacy or accepted that their privacy is not private anymore for the ease of, and simpleness that they get with technology, right? Mm -hmm. There's a trade-off there. It's not, it's not exclusive. Like, Hey, you're going to have a private world and you're going to have all this technology. It's, I don't have a, a Facebook page. I don't have all this stuff. I have people that do my, my unit's Facebook page, but I don't use technology. I won't until I get out of the military because I don't want people to know what I'm doing. Not that I'm doing anything bad. No, uh, but you know, you're, yeah, of course, just you're in a vulnerable position, um, being in a position of power to a degree. And, um, yeah, I, I understand that quite a bit. And also just generally speaking, yeah, I mean, our next president, you know, um, or in 10 years, let's say whoever is running for office, I bet you there's going to be in the same way there was the WikiLeaks dumps or the whatever, they're just going to dump their entire phone file. Uh, whoever hacked it, you know, and then you've got and then you're sifting through that like the tax returns, you know, looking for dirt and whatnot. But the real question is, at that point, will there be so many deep fakes that nobody will even believe that? And will truth even exist in 20 years? You know, I don't know. That's that's the rabbit hole I go down. You know, you're exactly right. It, it, what is truth? Right. Truth is what people believe and and, and form opinions and, and decisions based on that. And that's that disinformation thing, right? Yeah. So how AI, getting back to AI, how AI can create disinformation. Yeah. It's yeah. wild. It is absolutely wild. Well, I think it's really cool that, you know, you're, um, um, the job you've chosen um, and the career path and, and, you know, your dedication to service and, and how it all kind of comes together. I think it's a very interesting line of work to, to be in. Um, what what would your goal be of sort of coming on this podcast? Are you looking to get more people involved? Would you say that that's that's kind of it? Or yeah, I would say getting the message out that you know that that the reserves are an option, and uh, you know, and it it, it it plays a role in, in you know the reserves alone. So Fort McCoy brings about two billion dollars to that economy mm -hmm. for Toma, Sparta. So you know, and and. We, you know, at Fort McCoy, it's about 2,500 civilians and military people that live there full time and are part of the community. And if you look at Wisconsin in general, just for the reserve piece, minus Fort McCoy, we're bringing about 350 million to the economy. And there's about, what, 4,000 soldiers that train, you know, in your neighborhoods. And, and the, you know, so we are part of the community and really you know, the option of joining the Army Reserve is out there and and the uh, and, and just have people think about that. You know, it's always a great that people, you know, thank you for your service and things like that. Uh, but, you know, we need more people to serve. We need good people and we need to continue support 
you know, of our populace, uh, you know, of, of the people living, you know, not only in Wisconsin, but, uh, you know, nationally. And we, we don't want to lose that. You know, the military has been, you know, seen as the most credible career, you know, you know, you have the lawyers on the bottom, militaries on the top. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 we're, and we're starting to see that skew a little bit. And I think it's because I think really disinformation, just different information coming out about the military, like you're going to die or, you know, we're political, we're woke, we're whatever, which necessarily isn't the truth, right? You got, you got to, you know, the narrative that gets out there. But, you know, my goal is just to say, hey, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a young person or you have your family member of, of somebody that's, you know, in, you know, college age or getting up there, uh, you know, think about the military, think about the Army Reserve, think about the National Guard, think about serving. And and let's get that you know that the the value of patriotism back you know in society because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that just like yelling out there you know what I mean you know from either yeah. side it, from the front it, seat of their truck you know yeah. or or their yeah. bedroom or wherever yeah yelling yeah. yelling into the phone and just yelling into the abyss yeah it's a weird we've created a very weird society um, but. Um, but I think there's a lot of great people in it, and and there's a lot of great um, avenues to find productive things to do. You know, this being one. No, I agree. I agree, and uh, and, and we'll definitely get you. And uh, my my staff's in contact with yours. If you ever want to do something, come out. You know, Fort McCoy. Uh, I see some training. A lot of training going on this month. A lot of training. Okay. That would be very. That would be very cool to do. I am on tour. I. I. But let's connect and see if we can't find a date that you know can get out there. That would be. That would be very fun. Yeah, I, I will tell you. You know, being a two-star general is kind of cool, right? I get a lot of respect. I've always been work for me and everything like that. But when I tell people I was coming on a little podcast with you, my status went up like tenfold. Oh wow! Really? Uh, oh geez. So I was sitting with my buddy, we were in the Pentagon and uh, we're in this meeting, a policy committee meeting, and he's from Wisconsin. Yeah. And and I go, you ever hear of Charlie Barron's? He goes, Charlie Barron's? He goes, yeah. He goes, my family and I love him. Uh-huh. I go, I'm going to do a podcast with him tomorrow. He's like, you got to be shitting me. He goes, <laughs> really? Yeah. He goes, you're joking with me, right? So so I want to give a shout out to General Latinsky and his family. You know, they are, they, they, you know, he lives in Milwaukee. Great guy, great family. His daughter goes to West Point. To, uh, oh so wow well you you got to tell him i says hi and, and make sure he knows to watch out for deer out there you know yeah yeah a lot of deer a lot of deer out they're there. out there well you they're closer to you than they are to me i'm in milwaukee myself yeah i was coming back one day from fort mccoy to snow and i saw two dead bear on the side of the road no yeah. someone two dead uh was it a mom and a cub no or- it's two I, you know it was two full-size bears you gotta be shitting what? me yeah, that was it was it was crazy. On the side of the road. On the side of the road. Yeah. Ah. There's a lot of animals out there. So there are not only the deer, the bear. Yeah. I couldn't imagine hitting a bear. No, you're not that car is uh totaled. Yeah. 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 Those are big yeah. those are big boys. Yeah. And gals. But, but but we will hook up, uh, get you out there, you know, kinda you know, we appreciate I appreciate you, you know, kind of taking me on and, and getting kind of a message out. About yeah, the, you know, the, army, the army in general. I mean, we need influencers like you out there to they have a strong message. Well, you know, I think uh, bottom line is that, um, yes, in an ideal world, would there be um, no military and the whole world would live in peace and harmony and this, that and the other thing? Y- yes, of course. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of folks who are hesitant to support the military thinking that you know, from a sort of pacifist side. But even those folks, I think, realize um, that, you know, we are not in an ideal world. And, and, and you know, there are those who think, yeah, too woke with all the um, new things that the military is putting in place or whatever. Bottom line is it's a representation of our country to the world. And there's so many different things you can do within the military, um, whether it be the tech side, you know, you you could just whatever job you can imagine it exists in the military in some form. And um, it's a great way to, you know, um, just serve. And I, I'm not saying everybody I myself didn't serve, but finding 
ways to uh, give back in some way, whether it's through the military or otherwise. But the military is a very organized way uh, to find maybe something you're good at, to gain skills and and to go forward, you know. Um, does that does that seem like a, a fairly good pitch to you? Did I miss anything? And that's in that? an awesome. That's an awesome pitch. That's an awesome pitch. You know, the artist, but you know, the, the service, service to a nation, right? That's something mm-hmm. bigger than bigger than you and I. So that's that's awesome. Well, real good. Well, thank you for coming on. And um, you know, I would like to connect, and maybe we can get some dates from your folks and and get out there and and uh hang out for a little bit and see what's going on i think i think you'd enjoy it i think it'd give you a little bit of different perspective on you know kind of what we do especially you know seeing the seeing the reserve and national guard soldiers a lot of them from wisconsin out there i think you'd be a i think i think you'd be a you would be a good you'd be a good thing for you know to have out there and i think it'd be it, it's like i said my status went up tenfold <laughs> being on your show so well yeah. i i really appreciate you coming on and i i would like to get out there and say hi to everyone that would be fun right. we'll, we'll coordinate that hey thanks again charlie and uh really appreciate the time yeah no thank you and and do watch out for deer and bear okay <laughs> all right all, <laughs> all right. right we'll see you all soon right. go bears all right uh, we'll no go packers f the bears <laughs> okay i had to get that in bye-bye <laughs> All right. Big shout out to Major General Baker for coming on the show. Um, Thank you all for listening. Make sure you uh, follow us on the uh, Cripescast. We got at Cripescast on all your uh, platforms. Okay. Patreon.com slash Charlie Barons. Huge thanks to Colleen Maraca uh, for uh, doing the EP on this Cripescast. Big thanks to Hannah Milos for editing uh, this. If you're wondering why our videos on social media look so amazing, it's Hannah. It's Hannah. She's a wizard. She I like is to a call wizard. her the editing wizard. That's very creative. I like that name. Yeah. Yeah. And we go, I go, you're a wizard, Hannah. Yeah. You know, yeah. she's a wizard. I, I call her that every day. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But yeah, if you're ever wondering why the videos are looking a lot, a lot better, Hannah. Hannah. She's yep. a skilled gal. She is. Um, all right, folks. Well, you keep her moving out there and make sure you watch for deer, and we will see you next week. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing life's got you down just keep her moving it's on wisconsin the badgers say it's the old wisconsin jubilee you know sometimes when you're ice fishing you put your foot into walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done no you gotta keep her moving